This video is supported by CodeNotary.io. Trust and integrity in your DevOps process. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to look into COBOL and vSAM. Specifically, we're going to look at COBOL and vSAM as we can work with on our beloved MVS 3.8 as delivered by the amazing TK4 distribution by Jurgen and you will be able to download TK4. I have many, many videos in this channel on how to get it and get it set it up to work on Windows or on Linux or any other of the operating systems that you may be using. However, a lot of people uh, don't realize that even though we have vSAM, uh, the beloved and very widely used to this day access method and storage method uh, for MVS and even ZOS as of today, also v, VM and uh, DOS VS and VSE. Uh, that access method was released in the early 70s. And so it is present in our MVS 3.8 because MVS 3.8 is from the early 80s. However, the COBOL compiler and even the PL1 compiler that we have available in TK4 in MVS 3.8 because of licensing restrictions we had to use the last open source version released by IBM the last open source version of COBOL on PL1 and as you can see here on this page here on the left side uh, IBM has a page with all the releases of COBOL and so of course we're here at, right now we're right here version 6.3 which is a 64-bit COBOL compiler very capable compiler but the very first version to be released was this one OS OS VS COBOL released with OS 360 in the mid 60s uh, version 1 release 2 this product number here now this COBOL compiler predates vSAM by about I want to say six to seven years so vSAM was released much later than OS VS COBOL but this is the only COBOL we can legally use on our MVS 3.8 because that is uh, partly financed by the US federal government and therefore open source by definition. Uh, all the other COBOL compilers that came afterwards uh, require a license, a very expensive license to be paid to IBM. And of course, um, that is not what we have in the enthusiast community. So therefore, we have a COBOL compiler that predates vSAM. And so this COBOL compiler knows nothing about vSAM, right? So. Um, in this video, Professor René Ferland is going to explain to us how nonetheless, with the help of the community, we are able to use vSAM together with the uh, OSVS COBOL compiler that we have in MVS in MVS 3.8. Over to you, Professor René Ferland. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Professor René Ferland from Montreal. I don't know if you remember me because I haven't done a video on Mushik's channel for a while now. It goes back to August 2019 where when I made a video about Music SP which was quite successful. I was very happy about it and somehow I was scared to do another one uh, after that. Besides it's not like I had that much to say but Still, I'm back now and I want to talk about vSAM, okay? Uh, a long time ago, 18 months ago, I made a video about vSAM uh, on VM370 actually, okay? That was video M93 and I explained in that video how to create vSAM datasets uh, on uh, VM370. And also, I explain how to perform uh, input-output operations on a vSAM dataset from a PL1 program running on that system. And to do that, I used uh, an assembler module written by Jay Mosley called vSAM IO. Okay, and today what I would like to do is to show you how to use vSAM IO with a COBOL program on MVS 3.8J and DOSVS release 34. So uh, maybe <coughs> it's gonna be uh, useful because COBOL is the language of record processing uh, anyway, and 
the same data sets are very typically handled with COBOL programs. So, and I know that uh, MVS 38J is very popular. So, I, <coughs> upon suggestion by Mushix, uh, you know, I decided to talk about it. I accepted to talk about it. So, I'm not going to go uh, very far into the details. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be only one video. Um, here's what I want to do. I wrote it in this file over here for you to see. So the first of all, I want to install Visam.io on the system in question. So show you how to install Visam.io on MVS 38J and also on DOSVS uh, release 34. So on, on MVS 38J, it's quite easy. And then we, we have the, uh, the website of Jay Mosley that explains everything. But on DOSVS uh, release 34, maybe there's uh, some uh, can provide some input over there. Then after that, I'm going to create a vSAM cluster using the, the access method services. Uh, uh, so there, there, you can't use a COBOL program to create a, uh, a cluster. You need to use the access method services for that. But then once we have the vSAM cluster, we're going to load it with uh, using a, a, a COBOL program and a, a bunch of records. And now, uh, I'm not the one who wrote that uh, COBOL program. It's just one of the many, many examples that uh, J. Mosley provides. So I just use one or chose one and show you how to, to do the stuff with that. And after that, once we have loaded the cluster, we're just going to print it just to check that everything went fine. Okay. So let's, let's do these four tasks for tasks uh, on MVS 38J first, okay? So to install Visam.io, we need Visam.io, so we have to go uh, to the website of J. Mosley. That's the one here. And then we have this collections, this collection of web pages over there, and there is one Visam for COBOL. Uh, <clears throat> of course, the COBOL compiler on MVS 3AJ, the, the COBOL compiler on VM370 is actually the COBOL compiler on MVS 3AJ. And the COBOL compiler, in fact, on MVT. So uh, this compiler does not support VSAM datasets. Or VSAM, yeah, VSAM datasets. So uh, we have to use that uh, module of J. Mosley for that. So, of course. <coughs> If you want to use it, you have to download it first. Uh, so we go down over here. There are two. And, well, I guess you can't see that, but anyway, if you check the web page, you're gonna see there is a, an archive called VSIO install and VSIO test. So download these two. Okay. After that unzip these uh, archives the vsio install unzip to just one job that's going to do everything for us and the vsio tests unzip to a folder containing a lot of test jobs to test the software and, and uh, explore the different kinds we can do with the, the software so you can use that and test everything if you wish. I'm going to use the first one, VS test 01, just to create a physical sequential data set containing records that we're going to use afterwards to load the cluster. Okay, so maybe I move this thing over here and I'm going to use only these two jobs, okay, to uh, install the software and create that uh, physical sequential data set. Uh, data set, sorry, <clears throat> after which I'm gonna create the cluster and so on, okay? So uh, I don't need this uh, anymore and I don't need this also. Now I'm gonna, before I go, I need to edit a little bit these two. So let me do this. So I start the terminal. This is the MVS 38J as distributed on with uh, TK4 minus. So I'm going to start a new shell over here. I'm going to go to the desktop. 
and I'm gonna edit with my favorite editor VI VSIO install. So what do I want to do? First of all, I want to change the uh, the uh, job card, of course. So let me delete that one. Uh, I'm gonna use Hercules 01. I don't know J. J for job. Message class equal H. Uh, notify equal Hercules 01. And I'm going to submit from the card reader anyway. So let me add the user and the password later. Uh, all right. Then I want to change this over here, that uh, Cizard equal A, because I'm using message class H and I want to keep the messages. So I guess I want to, from that point up to the end, I want to substitute Cizard equal A by Cizard equal star. All right, right, back at line one. And the next thing I want to do is to change this uh, uh, <coughs> label over here from the label of the DASD on which to install the software. So by default here, it's on uh, 3380. The label is MVS801, but there is no such MVS801 on, on TK4 minus, but there are 3380. So, uh, I'm going to choose one and just replace it uh, in here, so that's going to minimize the amount of changes. So let me change MVS, what is it, 801 by uh, pub, I believe, 00, no, 12, okay? I think that's a 3380. Good. Uh, that's the... Uh, a part of the job that's going to assemble the module, okay? So, after that, we should be able to submit the job. So, let me submit it uh, with NC over here. So, 21001, the port is 2540. That's not the standard uh, socket of the card reader on TK4-. That's because I have two uh, I will have two uh, system uh, running, one with uh, MVS, the other one is the USVS, so I need two ports, uh, two different ports. But that's fine, use the standard port, I believe it's uh, 3505, and then the job VSIO install, and let's see what happened. It started, it's gonna take some time because it's creating data sets and after that he's gonna assemble the the Sam IO module that seemed to have gone fine so I'm gonna uh, make a CSO session into Hercules 01 to check what's happening okay see you later so maximum condition code zero so that's the condition code of that job and what will happen uh, RFE it's going to create, uh, let me check, four. It's going to create these two uh, data sets. <coughs> First one is uh, sys2.vsamio source. That's going to contain everything. And then this one is, is, is going to contain the vsamio module that we're going to use with the COBOL program. Okay. So if I check here, you have the vsamio. And over here, if I check, you have many uh, members. Uh, these guys here are example of COBOL programs using the Visamayo uh, module. And I'm going to use this uh, KSDS load example over here. Okay, and then later, just a little bit further down over here, you have Visamayo S. That's the, the assembler source of the module. Okay. So we can see it a little bit here. That's the one, uh, uh, the module that was assembled at the end of the job. And over here, these are two copy books. 
that we are to include, you know, in the in the COBOL program to access the VSAM data set. So this one, that's a, a parameter a copy book, if you wish. Uh, that's going to describe the parameter values of the VSAM IO operation. And then there is another copy book for the data set itself. Okay, a few over here. Uh, let me go further. You see it's going to give me the DD name, the organization, the access, the record land, the key, and so on. So that's a, a COBOL structure that describes the the uh, VSAM data set. So I'll come back to this uh, a little bit later. So <coughs> in order to use this uh, VSAM IO module and, this, uh, and run this COBOL program here, KSDS load we're going to use, maybe just check a little bit. So this program tests the VSAM IO routine by loading a key sequence data set cluster sequentially with records from a sequential data set. So that gives you an example on how to do that kind of operation in COBOL with the module itself. Okay, so as you can see, uh, maybe I go uh, down five. This is the description of the sequential data set that contains the, the records. And, and of course, there is no select for the, the VSAM data set because the compiler does not support it. But you will define the VSAM data set a little bit later over here, you know, with these two uh, copy books over here. So KSDS F01, that's the, the structure that describes the VSAM data set, and these are the parameter values for the, the module itself, the VSAM IO module itself. Okay, so I'll be back to this uh, in a few minutes. For the moment, what I need to do, I need to create, as I said over here, you know, uh, before I create a cluster, I need to create uh, a physical sequential data set that will uh, contain the records. Uh, that I'm going to use to load the cluster. So this is in this job over here. Uh, yes, I'm going to open this. There's no danger. And as you can see, maybe not that much, but uh, just uh, these are the, the, the records over here. And we just use, a, I believe, an IAB Jenner to, to do that. So that's a very simple job. So again, I'm going to so maybe I hide this, I come back here. I'm gonna edit uh, this uh, VS test uh, zero 01. Again, I need a different uh, job card. Hercule 01 S, maybe job class equal notify equal Hercule 01 with a user, rql one password, uh, equal see you later. And I have the same kind of problem. I want to change this thing. I believe there's just only two, so uh, replace star over here, replace star. And he's using MVS 804, but I'm going to use uh, pub 012. And that should be it. Uh, most probably this step will produce a return code of 8, because that data set does not exist. So if I try to delete a data set that does not exist, I will have a return code of 8. But I can, if I want, I can say uh, set to max cc equals zero and that's gonna solve this because if the data set is there fine if it's not i don't give it m so uh, so that should be okay so let's run this uh, not this but test like this is it good well, it seems to be okay so let's go here we have maximum condition code, so like this, and here comes the data set. Okay, browse.
here it is so that's fine okay so now we're ready to create the cluster okay so that was the easy part as you can see now we want to create a cluster so I'm going to create a cluster uh, in the TSO account of Hercules 01 for the moment. And I'm going to do that again from the card reader, but you can do it, of course, from uh, TSO. I'm just going to use the, my TSO connection to check what's going on. And this time I'm going to go into this uh, Visamayo um, folder over there because I have prepared all the jobs. So that's going to be a little bit faster. Uh, let me go there. Visam IO uh, MVS 3J. Now, what do I have here? I have VS IO install and VS test 01 modified. But I also have these uh, jobs over here. So Visam KSDS def is going to define the create the cluster. Cob uh, KSDS load will uh, load it. With records and then VSAM KSDS PR will print the result. Now uh, I'm gonna show you these jobs but you don't have to uh, take note that much because I'm gonna make these jobs available on my uh, personal website. And so I have one because Gerard gave me one. So if you go over here you'll end up into uh, Professor Sverland Jurassic Park. You know? Because in the movie Jurassic Park, there is a, a professor that organized the park. So, because people call me Professor René Ferland, so I thought I could call this site Professor Ferland's Jurassic Park. Anyway, that's uh, just for my own pleasure. Uh, you might wonder what's the address. Here it is. Okay. So, uh, this Geronimo 370, that's the site of Gerard, and I have a sub site if you wish. Uh, that he gave me uh, generously. And over there you will find different tabs with all kinds of stuff and under the, the tab MVS38J I'm going to put the jobs that I'm showing now but I'm going to wait that the, the video is, uh, is over there before I do that. But, uh, so just check what's going on on this, uh, on this site to get the jobs and if you wish of course you can look at the stuff that I put over there. There might be some some stuff related to the videos I've done, but there also there is some other stuff too that you might be interested in. Okay, so enough publicity of me. Let's go back to uh, whoop. That's not going on. <coughs> okay. Let's go back here. Uh, I want to uh, create the cluster, so that's the job over there. Uh, page is some. As the as a def, so that's a pretty standard uh, job. Uh, <coughs> it calls ID cams, you know. And uh, first, I delete any uh, cluster that exists already, and then I create the cluster. That's a key sequence cluster with a data part and an index part, and so on. And I will catalog this into the, the TSO uh, user catalog. So normally, I should run this and. It, from the card reader and it's, it's going to work without any problem so, uh, so let's run this uh, that's vsam def like this okay. and let's check over here zero that's fine so let's go for uh, of course not that and then there is this employee over here. That's a VSAM with the, the data part of the index. So that should be good. Right there. <coughs> There's a data set here, outset. That's fun to watch like this. You know. <coughs> this was created automatically with a utility called IEBDG for data generator. So it's a it's a fun utility. <laughs> I encourage you to look at it from, if you wish. Okay, so now I've created the cluster. Now I want to load this with uh, uh, with uh, records. So here's the job. I'm going to show you. That's the job over here. So that's a very 
or maybe uh, just clear this first, uh, like this. Uh, let me uh, increase the size maybe a little bit. Oh, but I, again, like this. All right. uh, it's very simple. Well, of course, we have the, the, uh, the job card over here. Then I'm going to call this uh, catalog procedure. I need the compile link and go because I need to link the Visama IO module with my COBOL program. And because I'm going to use uh, copybooks, I need uh, to specify a parameter to the compile step. So these over here, load, size, and buff, these are the standard uh, parameters of the compile step in the catalog procedure. So I just reproduced them there, but I added this lib uh, parameter here. If you don't put a lib parameter, it's not going to work. And after that, because I say that I'm going to use copy books from a library, I need to specify the library. But the copy books, we saw they were part of this uh, dataset sys2vsamio source. So the cob syslib here gives the the DD for the the copy books uh, library. The sys punch is there just to avoid the a warning, I believe. And then, of course, I have to specify the source of my program, which is located again in this uh, PDS sys2 vsamio source. And that's uh, ksds load. Uh, I don't think you need to change anything in this. Uh, on the OSVS, we'll need to change a few things over there, but on MVS, no problem. Maybe I take a look with you again this uh, program, KSDS COBOL. Okay, so uh, the uh, uh, physical sequential data set is described over here. So the name of the data set in the COBOL program is record images, but the, the DD name of the DD statement that's going to give this uh, data set is over here, images. Uh, they say that's direct access on 2314, but it's going to be okay anyway. And after that, I have a description of the record uh, image images uh, data set. That's fine. This is the standard COBOL. And after that, I have this very small, uh, these two statements. Or you're invoking these copy books, so yeah, that's uh, you're gonna need them, you know, for all the uh, the uh, VSAM data sets that you're gonna use. So you need to specify it over here the DD name of your VSAM data set, and then a copy like this. And there are examples anyway, uh, again, in this uh, sys2 VSAM IO source, you know, of multiple data sets and so on. So don't worry about it, just look at, uh, at the, uh, the examples. And of course you have here an open statement. That's the, uh, the statement to open the physical sequential data set. So that's very quick. But uh, then after that, if you look, you have these, all this, now all these over here. <laughs> this is all you have to code to just open your vSAM data set. So it's a little bit longer as you can see, but what we have to do is essentially give the Visam IO uh, routine all the information it needs to perform the the opening of the data set, uh, the Visam data set in Assembler. So what will happen is that we have these uh, parameters in the structure, and the, the the Assembler module will take all the parameters and build. Uh, <coughs> file block uh, descriptor of the, the VSAM data set in, uh, in assembler dynamically and then it's going to perform the operation. So I guess if VSAM data sets are supported by the compiler, this operation, this whole operation is done by the compiler itself, I suppose. But then again, if we don't have that, we have to uh, give all the information necessary for the routine to uh, dynamically build uh, the control block and all the, the components of the, of the 
assembler routine to perform the the operation so so it's it's very well it's perfectly possible to do io operations on a vsam data set in uh, assembler whether it's on mvs 38 j or dosvs uh, release 34 but of course we have here in the COBOL we have to give all that information to the routine so that it can uh, do the, the work but it, it's a little bit uh, tedious but it's uh, quite easy so you just move all the parameters then call the the VSAM-IO module using the parameter block, the, the file control block of their data set, the VSAM data set and the record. And after that, you have this uh, uh, condition, the output condition test, you know, whether or not you have a success in the operation you tried to do. Most of the time, if you do uh, things properly, it's going to be okay. But in case you run into some kind of problem, you have this uh, these statements you know to give you what happened well to give you the what happened in the IBM language you know this is perfectly uh, legit and, and standard you get a return code you get a function code a feedback code that's uh, strictly speaking what you need but of course you uh, you it's not that easy to decode because you, you if it doesn't work you know you may have a a return code of 20 with a VSAM return code of 98 with a function code of 08 and a feedback code of 216 or something like that and then it's up to you to figure out what happened with your VSAM data set but uh, if you do right, uh, things right you'll never uh, encounter that so that, that should be okay and after that well all the operations are done and most of the time you know you have to <coughs> do the, the, <clears throat> the loading of the, the data set. So let's try to continue uh, looking at the, the job. So that was for the so Then we have this statement over here for the linking. That's the, the idea is that we are compiling the COBOL program and we want to add to this COBOL program the VSAM-IO assembler module. So we need to link it uh, with uh, the Visama IO uh, uh, object module. There are several ways to do it. Probably with a step lib that would have worked. This technique here is the one that uh, Jay Moseley is using itself, himself. Sorry, it's uh, what is called concatenation. So we have syslin is the uh, DD name of the the. Uh, the object module produced by the compiler and we want to concatenate this object module with this one so that's the technique to uh, realize this this is a trick of JCL if you learn uh, JCL enough and then after that we have the go step so images remember is the DD name for the, the physical sequential data set KSDS F01 is the DD name for my employee cluster over there. And I also need the, this sysout uh, DD to print the result. So, well, some messages, you know, that uh, when you have statement with display, you need a, a DD like that. So let's run this program and hope that everything goes fine. So I'm going to send this program of this job to TK4 minus. Uh, okay. Apparently it went fine, so let's check over here. Uh, that should be zero. Okay, back here. Uh, eight. Uh, so these were my job. Uh, oh no, that's select, huh? So the compile went fine with return code zero, the link edit also, and the execution too. So if I take a look, it shouldn't be very long. It's going to say, uh, you can see the inclusion of the copybook over here. So that's fine. And then at the end, at some point, that's fine. Now you see that he's including this Visamayo module. That's what we wanted. 
and then uh, we have this message uh, KSDS load, right? KSDS sequel 100 records were loaded successfully, so apparently everything went fine. Uh, I cannot, of course, I cannot go uh, over there, you know, and uh, try to look at this. Uh, this this thing right away because he's gonna oh well that's gonna work <laughs> that's fine so I'm not gonna run this job usually if I do here well just because it's a sequential I guess that's working sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but anyway uh, it depends on the nature of that VSAM data set over here but uh, it was possible to see it so I'm not gonna print it because we saw that it's okay anyway huh? so let's view here it is so that's fine. So we just created that uh, uh, VSAM cluster, <coughs> that key sequence VSAM cluster. Uh, the key uh, is the first part of the, of the record, and after that is the content of the record. Maybe I run the job anyway, just to show you um, the, the output of that one. Uh, KSDSPR, I guess. Mm -hmm. And let's take a look quickly. Uh, zero again. And then print over there. Uh, no, select, sorry. So now we see uh, that the record, the key of the record is that part over here. Okay. And it shows the key first and then the whole record, including the key. So everything went fine. So. That's it. So <clears throat> now that you you have this uh, sys2 vsamio source and vsamio object, you can use it anytime the way I showed you, and you can practice uh, explore. And especially if you go there, uh, sys2.v over there, you know, you have all these examples. You know, load. Uh, LVAR is for records with a variable length, multiple data set, uh, creating this, reading, updating, and so on. And he gives example, as he did for, on, uh, on VM370, with the three kinds of VSAM data set. So if you look at these programs, you'll, you'll learn everything you need to know on how to use VSAM.io with, uh, with a COBOL program. Okay on MVS 3AJ and then after that you can run many of the test program of uh, J Mosley just to check that everything is fine and go on start a project okay so that's about it for MVS thank you very much René Ferland this was very interesting so we learned in this video how to use the very old uh, OS VS COBOL compiler from the 60s, which predates MVS by about 10, 12 years, with the VSAM access uh, methods, which were released, as we can see here, in the early 70s, I believe in 1971. And so uh, it is absolutely possible, uh, and uh, Brenner has showed us how to do it. I think this will conclude this video here. Rene Ferland has also made a follow on video which shows how to use a similar approach to use COBOL and VSAM on DOS slash VS, which is the uh, stepbrother or the little brother of MVS for the mainframe. If you have any questions, please post your comments below this video. If you have anything you'd like to ask, I'm sure that Professor Marie Ferlon will answer in the comments below this video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.